All right, it's on, it's on, it's on. Great stuff. Hope you're having a fantastic day, and um, you are having a uh, yeah, having a fantastic day. I was just putting together today's show notes. If you can see them there, see how to talk to other entrepreneurs. Now, my name is Prosper Tarovinga, and I'm the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital. Yo. Uh, digital marketing agency that helps you start scaling grow especially other entrepreneurs to actually help you market brand and scale your business I can see Michelle you tuning in how are you doing long time no see hope everything is working well for you and I see Barbara is in the house thank you so much for tuning in like I was saying um, yeah my, my job especially is to help you start a business that you enjoy start a business that's profitable and start a business you're actually working on instead of working in okay right so essentially every single day at 2 p.m. AEST because I live in Melbourne I come here and sit down with those that have time for 30 minutes so that we can talk about stuff that would actually um, you know help you with your business and today I'm going to be talking to my fellow entrepreneurs that actually market or sell to other entrepreneurs okay right I can see Fred just tuned in thank you so much for tuning in my man so if your business oh, I don't need to, to, to have this if your business entails you to speak to other business owners I really want you to listen to this video today because it is a totally different game ball than if you're talking to, um, if you're a business talking to, you know, consumers or the mainstream, all right? So, you know, there's what is called B2B and, um, you know, business to business type entrepreneurship, which is what you do if you are a consultant, which is what you do if you're a coach. Which is what you do if you're like a accountant or if you're a lawyer because you half of the time you're talking to other people that already have a business that you want their attention, their money, their credit cards, ETC. All right. It's a whole different animal and it's a whole different fish to fry because you're talking to people that are busy. All right. You're talking to people that are constantly trying to work on their dreams. You're talking to people that are also working on their enterprise and you're talking to people that are trying to build something. All right. So it's going to be a totally different game ball if you approach it as if you're talking to a housewife who doesn't have anything else to think about except if her kids or her family have been fed. All right. So if you're marketing to other business owners, you actually need to offer at least seven things that's in your branding, in your marketing, in your pitch or in anything that you do as a person or how you present your work to other business people in order for them to actually, first of all, listen to you and to actually pay attention to you and then transact or even want to do business with him all right and now i'm here to teach you some of the things that i do so that you can also see how it's all done and how other people are doing it out there all right so i wrote down the seven things if you don't mind i'm just going to read out to them and then we'll go into explaining them a little bit later and if you're really enjoying this video right now please share this video like it because as you know if this is your first time we sit here for 30 minutes and then we just discuss a topic up until everybody is satisfied, all right? First of all, if you're talking to um, business people, they are going to want increased sales or a return of investment. It doesn't matter what you're selling. It doesn't matter what it is that you're putting in their face. They are going to want dollar for dollar whatever they paid you and they want that return and they need to see it either immediately or they need to see how long it's going to take. That's number one. Number two, they want to make sure they're making a safe choice. All right. And Francisco, yes, please write them down as I go. They want to make sure they're making a safe choice. All right. There's so much that they're being bombarded with. There's so much information overload that they're receiving every single day. They want to make sure that the choice that they're making is a safe and logical choice for them to go ahead with. Trish, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. They also want to make sure that whatever they are accepting is going to give the maximum convenience. All right. Are they going to save time? Are they going to save money? Are they going to, uh, you know, um, save equipment or resources? Or is it going to be convenient for them to change over to your program? Or is it going to be going into their time? All right. So they want to make sure they have maximum convenience. 
Number four, they want to save money. Is your product saving them money? Is your product making sure that they, if there's other, um, you know, pro- products out there or... Uh, is, this, is, this, is this how we do it? Okay, I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm waving. Doing the Mexican wave with you there, uh, Trish. If your product is not any cheaper than any other products out there, what's the difference? What are they actually getting? All right. And number four, most of the entrepreneurs would want a DIY solution. All right. If they can help it, they don't want to continuously pay for your product. They don't want to pay continuously because what you're creating is something they can do themselves. So they want to make sure that you are offering them something that if they can learn today, are they able to replicate and do it on their own, etc., etc. Barbara, thank you so much for tuning in. They also want to make sure that you are going to be reliable and that your service is consistent and you are actually going to perform and deliver on your promise. Okay? And then number seven, they want vendors that they can trust. Okay? They want to make sure that because they're building their dreams, They want to make sure that you're going to be there tomorrow. You're not going to, you know, when they call you, you're going to be there to help them actually solve the problem that you said you're going to solve. And then number eight, which is a bonus one, which I will talk about a little bit later. They want people with experience, people that have actually done what they say they're selling, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Because people buy what they want to become. All right. People buy what they aspire for, not what you think they want, all right? So those are the seven things, all right? But now we're going into the flesh of them. I know you're an entrepreneur. That's the reason why I just gave you out the seven things that you actually need to do. But if you're going to be watching this in replay or if you're watching this right now for the next 23 minutes, I'm going to be fleshing out all the things that I'm talking about, all right? Cool. Like I said, my name is Prosper and I'm uh, chilling in from um, Melbourne and uh, founder and CEO of the Online Prosperity Academy, Live Long Digital and the now world famous Online Prosperity Blueprint. If you haven't gotten your hands on it, make sure you do, okay? Because we're going to be talking a lot of stuff that goes in there. If you haven't gotten this, make sure you type in Blueprint or you reach out to Trish. She's in the audience there. She's the one that made this for me. Thank you so much, love. Okay, so we started off talking about if you're marketing to other business people, first of all, you are going to be handling their dreams. You're going to be handling their aspirations. So that is not just a walk in the park. That is not just something that you can just send a message and expect that I've been building my business for the last seven years. I'm just going to turn around just because of a statement that you've just told me in Messenger. All right. Think about it that way. Every person that you're going to be talking to has been building their business from a longer time than you can ever think of. It's their hopes. It's their dreams. It's letting down their family. It's, you know, you know, whatever they had to forego for them to build their dream. Now, what makes you think that a message or just one sentence in their mailbox today is going to convince them to give you the authority and the power to actually utilize their service or to to, to take over their business. They've been working on it for all this time, all right? So at the end of the day, if you are not continuously speaking to these people and actually creating a sense of trust that you are the person to actually work with them, show them where to go and how they can actually deliver or achieve their goals and dreams, you are not getting anywhere. All right. And Donovan says, do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, Donovan, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, and you can look it up under Live Long Digital or I'll just put in the link as soon as we're finished. All right. So it, like I say, guys, if you're going to be marketing to other business owners, you need to offer them, first of all, a return of their investment, a return of their money and the return of their attention. Because those things, they value the most because if they're not, you know, if they they could have been doing whatever they're doing and and growing their business. So you don't want to waste their time. All right. So for many business owners, you know, marketing to other fellow entrepreneurs is the first thing that they think is the way to go. 
But the challenge is, let me tell you something. Entrepreneurs are obviously one, they're time stressed. They, they don't have time to watch videos like this while it's during working hours. They are always multitasking. They've got other people to deal with in, 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 you know, in order for them to grow their business and to enrich their lives. Okay. So, you know, they are, they already know what risk is and they don't want to increase the risk that they already have taken on in their business by accepting your, you know, content or by accepting your services. All right. So it makes it, it makes it very difficult for you to actually approach an entrepreneur and to actually convert them into a customer. All right. But there's ways around it. If you actually really, really, really want to win in this, in this, in this business. All right. So you see for me, fellow entrepreneurs are my bread and butter. Okay. I cannot go to a housewife and, and start selling them SEO services. I cannot go to a housewife and start selling them AdWords. They don't need it. I have to talk to people that have businesses because they want to reach out to their audiences. All right. So my marketing should definitely meet their unique needs. It should definitely meet their requirements so that I can motivate them to take action. Half of the time, some people are just trying to build a business, but they don't realize what it is they have to do. And that's where I come in. That's where maybe your services come in. So what are you doing to be in front of these people that are busy, that are multitasking and that are being bombarded with a lot of information every single day? My answer to that is you got to be constantly creating relationships. All right. Because right now you're watching this video. It doesn't mean that they are not other people that are doing their lives at exactly the same time. It doesn't mean there's people that don't want your attention right now. But you are making a choice and a conscious decision to say, you know what, maybe let me listen and find out if I'm going to get value from this. All right. Now, my point and my aim is to now make sure that I'm providing that same value so that you keep watching this video again and again and again tomorrow. And, and, and you start knowing and liking and trusting me. And then eventually when I do present my offer, you'd be like, you know what, I think at least I owe this guy something he has been giving me value. That's how you want to approach a B2B sort of, um, you know, um, uh, approach. Some of you guys are just sending messages in the morning and hoping that somebody would, 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 would just respond to that. I don't think it works like that. Okay. B2B, um, in the words of Steve Brosman, my, um, my, uh, mentor, he says B2B is not just building to building, but it's actually, you know, business to business and person to person. Okay. So at the end of the day, you know, like I mentioned those seven things, when you approach a business person and you're offering them their services, make sure you tell them what it is that you're going to do to increase their sales and their bottom line. All right. Most business owners say that their primary objective or the reason they're actually in business is to consistently get sales, get profit, etc., etc. All right. Nobody's going to listen to you just because you're coming in with your airy fairy ideas. What's in it for the business person? All right. Will them buying your product or your service actually help them achieve their goals of increasing their sales and, and, and gaining more profit? You see, so if the answer is yes, put that benefit front and center in whatever you're going to be communicating to your clients. All right. Every single day you do realize that I take a bit of the, of the online prosperity blueprint. The benefit of having this stuck on your wall is you are never lost at what stage you have to be marketing within your business. All right. It, it helps you increase your productivity. It helps you increase your profits. So that's the reason why I'm not shy and I'm not afraid to let you know that this is something that you actually need. All right. You know, so when you can help your customers grow and you become that person that they really, really want to be amongst. And if your service or your product provides a return of investment, put that as a benefit. That is what an entrepreneur wants to hear. Hi, John. Hi, Sally. If you use this pen, you become more productive and the more productive you become, people buy your stuff and the more stuff people of yours buy, it increases your profit. That's what an entrepreneur wants to hear. They don't want to hear stuff about where you've been, what you've done. It doesn't matter to them. They want to hear if your product is going to increase their sales. All right. Another thing that a lot of us are not doing when we're selling to other entrepreneurs is we are not showing them why we are the safe 
um, you know, option on the market. All right. In this day and age, which is we are so concentrated with all these messages and being bombarded by a lot of people. What makes your opportunity? What makes your service? What makes your business be the safest option for my multi-million dollar business for my hard and cash? All right. So when you are presenting yourself to a fellow entrepreneur, show them why that or why your service is a safer option than anybody else. Right? So being a business owner requires you to make a few calculated risks here and there, but you're not going to be risking and trying somebody else who's just going to experiment, first of all, with your ad budget, second of all, experiment with your brand, and, sec and third of all, experiment with your time, money, and effort. All right. So when people buy inventory or if they are acquiring you know, office space or they're hiring employees, all of that, they need to know why are you the safest option for an entrepreneur. Now, Stephen says, show them how you can improve their margins with a better offer. Well, pretty much, yeah. If you're going to be saving the money, I'm, I'm going to talk about saving money um, you know, as we go along there. It's, it's, it's part of um, the things that I'm talking about. But at the end of the day, people need to make sure that your service is the safest option. All right. So when they buy it or when they consume your service and in comparison to buying other outside products or services, entrepreneurs as a group, they really, really tend to be the most cautious people as to who are they aligning their brand with. All right. Uh, who are they also putting their money to? Are you a person that's going to be consistent? Are you a person that's going to deliver? Are you a person that's going to be working with them? At the end of the day, maybe somebody may approach me and say, hey, listen, let's work together. And I'm like, I like your work, but what is your brand? What am I associating my name with? Do you know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you create a safe environment for your entrepreneur customers so that they want to be associated with your brand. Okay, so you want to demonstrate that buying from you is the safest choice and you want to provide them with with, a, you know, like like a content rich campaign that has maybe feedback from other customers and in depth, um, you know, product information, a lot of reviews from people that are plus or minus in the same bracket as they are. You want to make sure that you are making them want to keep up with the Joneses. OK, no one is just going to want to experiment with you. And I'm afraid if this is just maybe your first time in business, it might not mean anything. But if you're not providing your customers or your prospects with the reason that your affiliations or who you are associated with as a brand or your industry certifications, anything that you are a safe bet from the competition, I think it's going to take you a while for you to actually make a name or to actually sell or convince somebody who's actually building a brand. Okay. Now, Stephen says they need to use your brand. That's credible. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to be talking about how to, um, I always talk about creating a credible brand and how people actually buy from those that they know, like, and trust. So instead of you just going out there and trying to sell, 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 be creating a brand that would last you know, and, and, and will create a ripple or create a buzz in the market so that people feel safe. People feel like they can trust you and people feel like you're the person that can solve their problem. All right. That's the reason why whenever you see, um, you know, um, bigger businesses coming into an area, people go with them because they've been there, they trusted. And that's the reason why you as a small business, it's difficult because you are not consistent and you're not showing your customers that they are safe if they put their trusted money with you. All right. One of the things that a lot of business people or entrepreneurs want is convenience. Is your brand or your business or your product offering that convenience? You know, what does Uber sell? Uber sells time. It sells time back to you. You no longer have to worry about a taxi, et cetera, et cetera. You get into a, um, um, a, a car that's des de designated to go wherever you're going to go. You're not going to fumble through your wallet trying to look for the right change. All that time is eliminated. You get into the car, you say goodbye to the person and give them a five star. And that's convenient. All right. Is your service offering that maximum convenience? Yeah. 
I, I, I don't know. Maybe you might tell me. Have you ever met a successful business owner that always has time on their hands and is willing to give you, you know, an hour whenever you need it? You know, the truth is running a gr and growing a business often requires people to be engaged for long hours. They're making, um, you know, so you want to make sure that you, you are convenient to them. You are not interrupting them, you know, while they're on their live like this. You're not interrupting them, um, you know, while they're talking to other customers, you know, during business hours. Figure out a way that you can reach to them, all right, in a way that it is, is convenient to them. The best way to do that is to put out content, all right? So when I'm on my break, I can read through a blog. And if it's from you, good for you, all right? I'm not going to listen to what you're going to call me on, on the phone and try and put your, 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 you know, your agenda on me. That's not going to work for me, not even in the miles. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs don't even, you know, pick up their phones anymore. All right, so you want to make sure that that shopping is convenient for them. Your website is actually converting. They have little or no human contact as possible in order for them to, to complete a transaction. And if they want that human con con contact, you, you have a customer care agent or somebody who is there to answer any questions. All right, because nobody has the time to figure out if this is going to work or not. They just want convenience. Now, if you're going to be putting a lot of bottlenecks in, in, in the transaction between your client and the money that they're supposed to pay you, they're going to choose the cheaper option and go for somebody else who's got their shit in order. All right. So, you know, for example, your, your, your website or even your brick and mortar store, if people cannot reach it, nobody's going to come to it. Okay, so essentially when you're building, you know, all those sales funnels that you guys are trying to, you know, sell to us, if it's not flowing in a way that somebody goes from one step to another and then they get an end result, then you're wasting your time. And make sure you top that up with top flight customer service across all the channels. So that means if you cannot afford to be on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, just choose one channel that you're going to give your total attention to. All right. Gone are the days where you had to be, you know, on multi channels or things like that. Choose the one or two channels that you consistently going to be there so you can create and relate to your entrepreneurial customers. People are tired of one-click wonders. People are tired of has-beens or people that are just dabbling through, you know, and wasting their time, all right? So you don't want to be that guy, all right? And in all these things that you're doing, show the entrepreneur, um, you know, um, prospect that you're going to be saving them money by purchasing your service or by going with your, your, your product, all right? So, you know, you know marketers like myself who actually have you know some sort of experience while we're targeting corporate buyers all you gotta do is look at what they're doing and see how much your product is going to save them some money yeah because at the end of the day if an entrepreneur is going to be a prospect chances are they already have somebody who's doing whatever you want to propose to them Chances are they already have a vendor that they've been using all this time because they just didn't show up today just because you're ready to sell them. All right. So you want to make sure that whatever you're presenting to them, they will be saving money. They will be saving effort. And that's all they need. And if they're saving money, that means they're going to be making more money. And if your product is going to be providing that for them, then good for you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you want to add value to your offers. You want to give them more that so they cannot, so that the offers are irresistible. All right. Because all we're doing is sell, sell, sell. But if you're providing more value and, you know, bundling all your products together and just being there for your entrepreneurial clients and showing them that, you know, your, your business livelihood depends on them, even if they don't, even if it doesn't. But you just show them that you need them in order for them to survive. It will make it easy for them to actually convert to you. So you can actually look into things like, you know, free shipping or warranties. Don't make it difficult for them to make a decision. Help them make that decision. All right. And some of the, t some of the things, a, a few entrepreneurs are happy to do like a so software as a service type product. But some entrepreneurs like myself like to DIY a lot of solutions, 
Okay, so you know, sometimes I want to know how to do certain things and then maybe outsource it. Don't make it difficult for your entrepreneur friend or um, you know, um, a, a prospect to reach out to you or actually get that process happening. All right, so a lot of you know, time strap business owners might not have enough work, um, you know, they might not have enough hours to be working within their business. And if your service or your, 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 your product can actually help them save time, give them back that time that they can spend with their families, you would have won them. Make sure that you are presenting your best foot forward and your best benefits of your product so that you are coming up with a win win situation. All right, you're not closing deals, but you're opening up relationships when it comes to entrepreneurs. You never know who they know. You never know who is in their network. You never know who else they can, you know, or maybe leave you a, re a, a review or a testimonial that would then attract more business to come um, your way. All right, so whatever you're going to be doing, if you're going to be prospecting out to other fellow entrepreneurs, if you're not putting out content for them to consume at their own convenience, then I think you're missing out on the whole um, ethos of people being available. That whole script of, you know, perfect times to be posting um, on Facebook, I think it's flawed because I know there's people that work at night. There's people that work during the day and some people don't even go on Facebook, but go on Facebook at night. So if you're following some sort of script that somebody wrote and says that these are the best times to post on Facebook, your entrepreneur prospects are not seeing your stuff. And that's the reason why your shit is broken. All right. And after you have reeled them in, after you've worked with them, etc., etc., you want to make sure that you're reliable and you're delivering on your promises. OK, <clears throat> let me tell you something. The most crucial part is not, you know, you know, signing that dotted line. It's the post sale, the onboarding experience. All right. That's where a lot of people lose it. All right, because first of all, you were being nice, 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 and you know, trying to reel them in, and then once they're in, you're now showing them your true colors that you are, you are, you are, you 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 are, you are inept. All right, so when when entrepreneurs have made that per careful purchase, you know, you want to consider that post sale phase. All right, a lot of us don't consider the onboarding or what to do when a customer comes in because we never sell anything. And when we do happen to sell something, it's far and in between, we don't have a process. All right, so you want to make sure you actually have an after sales process that is seamless, is exactly the same way they got in so that you're not wasting their time. Remember, these entrepreneurs are busy people. All right, so your after sale customer experience after people make a purchase should be exceptional. They want to know that your company is going to be there and is going to support them with whatever they have sold. So maybe your program needs to be implemented, etc., etc. You got to be there or have somebody who is employed to actually provide that service. Yeah. And sometimes some people want, you know, they, they you when you sign a deal with them, they want to see what the first three months are like and then continue again. You want to make sure that the onboarding and the whole process after that, you're looking after them and you're delivering on your promise. All right. So you want to make sure that you're actually motivating them to want more so that you can continue with them on your value ladder. Therefore, you now have them for life and you're now a vendor that they can actually trust. All right. If you see yourself from January to February, you're selling a different product. From February to uh, May, you're selling a different product. From March to whatever, you're selling a different product. You are proving yourself to be inconsistent. And once you become inconsistent, it becomes difficult for people to actually know who you are and even trust you. All right? Entrepreneurs often prepare, um, they usually really, especially myself, I really want to work with people and businesses that I know, like, and trust. I'm not just going to, you know, jump onto your stuff just because it's a shiny object or you think it's a good thing. All right. So when you go out and you're networking with people, make sure you're consistent either in the way you dress, in the way you present yourself, in the way you talk. You know why? Because some people are watching and it takes up to eight or nine times for somebody to actually convert and then say, you know what? I think you're the guy for me. 
All right. So, you know, just because they haven't, you know, approached you or come to you yet, it doesn't mean they're not ready for you. Okay. So you want to make sure I'm going to just read the seven things that I was talking about. You want to make sure your products, if you're selling to entrepreneurs, you're going to be helping them increase their sales. You're going to make sure that they have made a safe choice by um, choosing you as a brand or as a business. You're giving them maximum convenience and you're saving them money, time and effort. And most of the solutions can either be DIY or are easy for them to replicate and do for themselves. You're going to be reliable. You're going to be consistent and you're always going to be delivering on your uh, promise. And you're going to be a vendor that they can trust. All right. So all of this is easy if you actually put a system towards your work and put everything else into a small floor so that you don't look like you're working too hard. You wake up in the morning, you know this is what you got to do. If you haven't gotten your hands on the blueprint, just type in blueprint now and then I'll send you through a copy of this. Or if not, then hopefully this video has been valuable for you. So if you have a friend or somebody who might want to watch this video, please share this video with them and get them to realize that Entrepreneurs are people like them too. You only just got to treat them in the way that they want to be treated and the way that you want to be treated. I hope you're going to make so much business today. And, um, you know, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you so much for today.